the, um, showing you uh, uh, the technical side, which I assume is much less known in the community than uh, the building related standard. Uh, and I'm essentially talking about the EN1679 family of standards. This is actually an overview uh, of all those standards. The red parts are even things that are not on the ventilation and cooling side, but on the heating side, but also covering cooling issues uh, for the water based distribution and the distribution standard are also used for. So I'm not talking about those, but we have relations to these two standards in, the, in, the, in our cooling standards as well. So the green part is actually the, the, the ventilation part, which is, has essentially two, what by this, put it two pieces, so there are three documents, and, and the other documents for the, for the cooling side. Which are so these are three ventilation related standards, I'm not going through that, it's just here for, for completeness so that if you have the presentation you can look the proper title and numbers. Uh, I start with part seven, which is actually the like the um, combining standard between the building side or the, or the requirement side for the ventilation on the zone level and the mechanical system. It means that that's what we call the emission of the, of the uh, ventilation standards. We mean, by emission, we mean the airflow rates that are needed, that are provided to the zone, either in mechanical or natural uh, way. So this is all the, all the pieces that, is, that are covered by the standard. Uh, I'm not reading that. But, and there are two methods actually in this standard. One is based on detailed building characteristics, another one is based on the statistical approach. And it's applicable on an hourly or, uh, or a monthly time step for calculation. <coughs> I'm not sure if this is the term that we use in the standards. Uh, the, it has connections, of course, to the standard we just heard about from Dick uh, before. Uh, for instance, for the heating and cooling requirement, if you have air-based systems and you control them to cover the cooling and heating need uh, by an air-based system, this is possible and it's covered in this standard how to uh, make this, uh, this connection between the zone requirement and the system as it reacts on it. The other thing is actually, of course, uh, EN 16798 part 1, which, gives, which is a uh, finally published now, <laughs> which is the basis for required flow rates, for instance, uh, to be taken into account. This is actually where uh, we uh, have connections to. There is even some more things in between, like uh, 16, 798, part 3. Then uh, the tech, actually the technical side, I mean the system itself, meaning the duct, work and the generation, what we call generation is actually what we mean by that is the air handling unit. This is covered by part five and part five has two documents. Part five one is actually the comprehensive ventilation and air conditioning system calculation which can only be done actually in an hourly time step or maybe in a, with a bin uh, method but there it will be quite difficult because you would have have a bin method with multiple criteria bits, so it's not only just temperatures, for instance, temperatures and operation combined. And that, that shows that actually in, in the system part, and that's one of my messages, in the system part it's even more so that an hourly calculation uh, period makes things much simpler. And, uh, what we cover here with the standard is all the services like ventilation, besides ventilation, also heating, cooling, humidification, and dehumidification. And we are covering uh, a whole number of technologies like ground air preheating, cooling, recirculation, heat recovery, different types of heat recoveries with 
frost protection, uh, the Baltic cooling is also in a, in a certain simplified way <coughs> it's covered. So we, we have quite a bunch of technologies here. And uh, the spreadsheet, uh, Dick was also talking about the spreadsheets we have with all those standards and uh, we are uh, actually providing these spreadsheets to, through, the, through the EPP Center website. And this is from the spreadsheet to that standard. It's like a, uh, a choice menu where we, with drop downs, drop down menus, you can choose the different options that you have in this, in this uh, whole calculation. So it's like a start or a template for a user interface. Like, this is fully operational. You can download it and it's, it works. And it's also, uh, the spreadsheet has also the, the full dynamics implemented, so you have a, a whole series of, of uh, a time series of, of uh, conditions that is applied to that two different days of winter and a summer day and things like that. Uh, we have a, an error correction, which is uh, right now there is an amendment uh, going on. We detect it due to questions actually that were asked from the community. Uh, Eurovent was uh, one of the those uh, institutions that had questions about, so we detected that error. It's underway and it's already fixed in the spreadsheet. It's not online yet, the new spreadsheet, but it, I have it actually, it is ready. The part two actually for the same issue is much simpler, it's much, it's restricted in its application, but the positive side of that is it is also applicable for longer calculation periods like monthly or seasonal and uh, it covers a little bit different services like uh, the heating and cooling and domestic hot water. Uh, the generation for that is included because it actually thought to, be, to cover packaged systems like this which have for instance a heat pump included in the, in the device. Uh, typically residential uh, systems but not we do intentionally not restricted to residential application because there are, there are many smaller like office buildings which have, may have this type of equipment. I come to the cooling standards, another three. Uh, there is this uh, general part, part nine, I'm just going to show a few things about that. Uh, Fifteen is the, the cooling storage which covers things like uh, normal water tanks, but also uh, PCM and ice storage and things like that. I'm not going into detail about this. And part 13, which is the cooling generation. So this general part, uh, part nine, is actually shows the interconnection between the different modules. Um, it has two methods, actually it has a simplified method and a detailed method. The simplified is actually uh, showing these uh, different, or covering these different uh, types of systems, also direct expansion systems. Uh, these schematics here that, that we see on the side, uh, obviously the, my, my uh, slides do not really operate as, as planned, but it uh, doesn't matter so much. This, the more complex uh, schematic is in the standard itself. It act, it's actually there to to show the, like the interconnection of the different uh, modules. Uh, hidden behind there are two more uh, schematics, which um, with it, this is the detailed <coughs> method that should be, and this is the, the simplest version of the <laughs> simplified calculation. There are two other intermediate schematics, which are all from the, from the uh, technical report. Uh, they are in there. They are not in the standard. Um, but actually this is, I mean, you can, you can have different systems and they are in principle uh, all covered here. Uh, the cooling generation has two methods, an hourly and a monthly method. And here I can say it, I can repeat it, I can say it again. The, the hourly method is much simpler than the monthly method because you need for, for this system calculation things, for the different uh, equipment types, for the different uh, operational uh, schemes and so forth, you need 
tables and, and things, pre-calculated tables, tons of tables actually. I mean, it's not, we, we've done our best to, to provide all that's needed, but actually the, simp, the, 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 the hour limit is much simpler. Covers, uh, both cover actually compression and absorption chillers, multiple generators, free cooling option like uh, direct cooling through heat ejection devices, different types of heat ejections, dry, wet, hybrid, uh, cold condenser, and the associated controls, of course. Uh, and that's actually what is much simpler to, to calculate on an hourly basis than, than in, in pre-calculated tables and, and things like that, which are always only true for a certain climate and, uh, and a certain like culture of, of systems in, in a certain country. Uh, one question or one, one remark that I frequently hear is, well, uh, yes, you have a, a, a connection to the product standards, but you, nevertheless you don't get the data that you need. And therefore I just have a, an example here, which I had uh, on a national basis. This is just a, like, I mean, it's a pretty large and expensive cooling machine. It's quantum is a turbo compressor. Uh, but uh, what I got actually without any problem is the data for like five different part load ratios and, and different temperatures. So it was really easy to get the five like points to uh, which the standard actually requires to um, calculate the performance map like this. These are the, the red points, actually, that are the, the five points that I entered into the spreadsheet of 16798.13, and uh, the, the performance map was calculated out of that. And that's also, that's working, that's on the, on the EPB Center website. Not this example, but actually the, the spreadsheet that is able to do that. Now, uh, I promised also a little bit uh, to, to talk about the coordination of cooling and heating generation standards, because we do have different standards for heat pumps, which actually are the same machines for cooling and heating. Nevertheless, we, it is a matter of fact that we have different calculation methods in, in on the heating side, this 15, 316, 4.2, and, and our part 13, they are using different calculation methods. And, uh, well, what is, what is the problem about that? I mean, you can ask, some, some people think it is a problem, others think, uh, well, wow, where is the problem? You just do either this or not, or that. Maybe, I mean, if you have devices that provide both services at the same time, it is not, not really nice to have different calculation methods. Uh, on the cooling side, we have actually the, like the, the system or the, the, the method in place that we have, at least when we, when we do cooling, and we know that we have to reject a certain amount of heat we can offer that to be used on the heat side for domestic hot water or heating purposes. And our, our partner actually calculation that can take it up or not. I mean, this is, this is like, this is in the standard in, in part 13. Um, it's there. Another thing is uh, direct expansion systems. I have already talked about them. People are looking for them in part 13 and don't find them there, but they are in part nine. <laughs> uh, this is something that we have to explain. Maybe it's uh, something that we have some explanatory documents about to, to write, and this is a, I would say this is like uh, a task for the EPB Center to give these explanations. Also for this uh, coordination between the two we have an ad hoc group in Sen on the way. It just started, so we are not far with that, with that work, but we have started this, this ad hoc group, so we will sort this out. Uh, by the way, the heat pump standard actually is, is actually the one that has less, uh, is less mature, actually, and people are 
ha having problems to apply it. There are shortcomings in that standard, and uh, but I know from Johan also that there are other works around that that uh, will provide updated versions of that standard and the spreadsheet. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Gerard, for your presentation. Given the time frame, if there are no urgent questions, I want to... Oh, yeah, just one question. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Johan has one question before he has his presentation. Okay. <laughs> because, because, there was one very much, because there was one very much important point raised, of course, there are many important points raised by, <laughs> by Gerhard, but very much important, I think, is the availability of data. So I was just surprised when I saw your data. Uh, are they coming? You said it's coming from national, uh, at national level. But my question is, all this data are also the basis for eco-design. And are the data which are the basis for eco-design, yeah. are these data also public available? Well, um, different types of answers to that question. With this, this here is not... Uh, has nothing to do with the national. It was just a national project where I used it, but the data are from the manufacturer or the supplier of that equipment. Okay. So the designer had this data available from the from the supplier of the of the equipment and uh, could give it to me, no problem. Uh, another point is actually me as uh, as I said, we have this relation to the product data EN 14825, where we, uh, from EcoDesign actually, we should get at least four, the four different points for the, uh, I have seen now uh, sample uh, reports for the tests of the equipment, so you have not only the, the seasonal efficiency, but also the four points that are where the seasonal efficiency is based upon. So this is something we can feed to our calculation and, and it works. What we need here is actually a, a fifth point. Uh, we don't really need it. There is a way out if you don't have it in the stand. Simpli a simplification, uh, an assumption of, uh, of a constant uh, um, exegetic efficiency. So then, then you can fix that point as well. Otherwise, this area floats around this diagonal. We can fix it with a fifth point outside. Thank you, uh, Gerhard. Uh, then, if there are no other questions, the floor is yours, uh, Johan.